Hey everyone, I'm Brad Nelson. And I'm Ross Miriam. Not you again. <laughs> and you're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. <laughs> So this week, Ross, Miriam, and I are going to be playing a little bit of fun magic. We've got a whole lineup of different formats. We're leading off today with Standard with Dominaria. Yep. The format that I'm sure everyone is thinking the most about. New set. This set has been one of the most hyped, I think, in recent memory. Maybe Battle for Zendikar was up there, but that one ended up being a huge disappointment. So Yeah, I mean, I think Cons uh, was the last time that I felt like really excited about like when you see the cards and the flavor and stuff like that. I was really, I mean, I, I have nothing good to say about Exelon. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like some of the cards in it, but the first time they were just like pirates yeah, and they... dinosaurs. <laughs> and we're just like, wait, is, and it came out close to April. I thought it came out like, well, no, it wasn't. But like, I thought it was some weird April fool's joke. Like yeah. it just felt weird. But like when I saw this set, I mean, the first time I saw Goblin War Chief, like I, it was just like mainline nostalgia, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm in Dominaria. Like oh, we're yeah. doing this. Little known fact: I played Goblin Bidding and Standard for like nine months. It was the first deck that I played for an extended period of time. Same, like Gob, like whether it had Patriarch's Bidding, Skull Clamp, or Clicksilver, I I played just Goblins. That's, I was the Goblin. Like I had like the deck box that I would just have on my kitchen table, and I'd put it in my backpack, and I'd go. Yep. Like that's what Goblins was to me. So. I'm really excited about the set. Sadly, I'm not playing Goblins. <laughs> There's not enough Goblins standard, but we at least now get like Skirk Prospector and um, Goblin War Chief and Goblin War Chief in Modern, which is going to be really cool. Oh yeah. And even like um, and Siege Gang just by itself in standard. That's just a powerful magic card. Yeah. Same with like <laughs> I was thinking about like that with Skirk Prospector in um, in Gate. Um, also, I thought about really good. It came on my article last week. It was before I like recorded these, so like. I can't actually uh, switch, switch like, we're, we're stuck now for, for this week. But I was mad. I was like, oh, I should have put those into a Blue-Red Gate deck. And I thought of a really cool thing with the Dijin, the 5-6. Okay. Um, to have that in the sideboard as, like, one of, like, my Brad Nelson trick, like, sideboard cards. Because it's like, they take out their big removal against you. They bring in a bunch of hate for your graveyard or counter spells or braids. Um, slam a five, and you just have a 5-6 on turn 4. You have enough artifacts to make it happen. Yeah. And when it's bad, you have champion to just discard it. And I was like, that seems like a perfect sideboard card for this deck. Just some big monster for it to put into play. But again, I'm not doing that today. Um, today, <laughs> I'm playing that. Um, mostly trying to uh, try out... Uh, I'm just going to let you know what I'm playing because it's Dominator. We can, we can go back to like the cutthroat later. Uh, I am playing Mono Black Aggro. Okay. And uh, one, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what I'm playing. That's fine. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to be good because this deck was pretty good in the last couple formats. And I'm not sure if the shade is going to be better than uh, Rune Raider, but I wanted to give it a shot. But the thing that Black gets, like this deck gets, is not just some big change to the main deck. It's the sideboard. It gets a whole sideboard. Like it gets an upgrade on... on uh, it's discard effects from harsh scrutiny to divest. Yeah, which can hit artifacts and creatures. And so that uh, is the text on the card. Wow, why, why? <laughs> Just why do you have to be this way? I I uh, can't help it. I'm so, well. I, uh, I was gonna say I'm sorry, but I'm not. Um, fungal infection is just an upgrade to uh, ninth bridge patrol. Okay. It's just a good fast two for one against cheap decks, and. Uh, uh, Vicious Offering and Cast Down are both upgrades to different removal spells that could be good in the deck. Whereas, like, uh, you know, you walked the plank before with this deck because that's all you really had access to, but that didn't stop, like, Glorybringers or uh, Aether Sphere Harvesters and things like that that the deck really cared about. That makes sense. So you know, Definitely the sideboard was one of the was the weakest part of that deck yes. in the previous format, and, and so getting upgrades enough, there is big. A tons of good upgrades. So I think that this deck might be a contender just because of these small upgrades, having better removal, um, a better sideboard, and but I'm I want to see if the shade is any good, but odds are honestly I, I have I have little hope. Okay, uh, I'm also playing a deck that was sort of fringe in the last format, but got some upgrades from Dominaria, including the best card in the set. So we'll see how it the goes. best card in the set. Yeah. 
Oh, are you in that like <laughs> camp that thinks Elvish Mystic is the best card in the set because it was good before? Because the mana doesn't support the card anymore. Just letting you know that. Well, this mana base does. This. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he said it all. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, let's roll some dice and kick off this week on the Versus Series where I'm... I'm either going to keep my cool thrust or finally physically assault him. It's one or the other. Now I'm excited. All right, so uh, do you want to do the poker hand? Yeah, let's right, do it. I've already rolled, so we're good. <laughs> Here I was cheating with a straight, just yeah. not even nearly good enough. I have two pair. No! Uh, okay, my hand is fine here. This is not the ideal start, uh, but... We do have a card that will help dig us to more gas and a reasonable opening, so I will keep. Is it worse than Oath of Nyssa? Mm. It is not worse than Oath of Nyssa. Uh, okay. Come well, on. actually, it is because I have no one drop. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be the, the one. Yeah, card. Adventurous Impulse. Your turn. Ooh, that's pretty good. Heart of Kieran. Yeah, oh, that is a good card. All right, well, let's uh, attack. 18. And oh, so many one drops. <laughs> Your turn. Might just get run over. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. Um. Okay. So rather, my my normal plan was going to be this, but because I want to have a blocker down i am going to start with a green belt rampager with this trigger on the stack i'll crew i'll get myself a jacob baugh uh this will come back and then i'll play resilient kenner as a blocker pump oh, the heart yeah. and get in for six all right i'm at brings you to 14 14 and now this can block the vicious conquistador hopefully but yeah it'll get fatal push because for as a meanie it'll push trigger attack that for six. six i'm at 12 12 go yeah oh jeez. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty dead. Um, I don't really see... My one way of winning this game would have been to race in the air, but Bone Picker stops that. <laughs> um, so, how am I supposed to do this? Uh, Brad's attack right now is for nine. Nine is a lot. It is a healthy amount yeah and he still has many cards in hand they're not good though are they uncastable no they're all castable oh that's <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping you just had three dread shades in your hand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um at this point i think if i attack with heart brad just trades especially if it leaves me with essentially no blocker back because that's his only way of losing this game if he well, gets now that, another attack now, that six, you're, now that I know what's going on. I mean, it would all be on the yeah, table when yeah, I make yeah. the play. So I, I think I have to leave everything back. Um, so I guess I start with a Jade Light Ranger, all which right. explores. Uh, that's not what I wanted. You wanted to get it to three power? Yeah. Uh, well, that can just one, be or cast. Three toughness. That can just be cast this turn. Well, it's not going to be in my hand. <laughs> huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that good, Brad. I keep thinking these explore <laughs> yeah. creatures are better than they yeah. actually are. You'd be playing this card a lot if it, yeah. if it just drew two cards. Yeah. <laughs> we just banned Rogue Refiner, Brad. <laughs> um, no, and it was a hash up Oasis instead of a forest. <laughs> if I was going to draw a land, it could have at least been a forest. Um, so now this still only blocks Conquistador. So this attack would be for eight then. Um... Which would bring me to four. Um, hmm. uh, you do absolutely nothing. I'm not going to do absolutely nothing. Disagree. I said I'm not going to do absolutely nothing. Okay, crew this in attack. Interesting. I do really want to block it. Yeah, I'm just going to block it. Tilt. 
<laughs> uh, I'll take one to get an energy. Sure. I'm at 11. And I get to uh, tab? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Even after all that, my only way of winning was still you not blocking. <laughs> all right. Put your five. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> That's just too good. <laughs> you know? Gotta do what you gotta do. All right. Okay, so now I'm at five, and I'm definitely taking, uh, so I need two blockers. Hmm. I wonder if I could, I wonder if this card might steal this game. What? <laughs> what card? Uh, this one. Am I dead? You're not dead right now, but I might be able to now block him and like threaten a lethal crackback. Um. Yep. Trigger, you missed a trigger. Yeah, don't care. You missed a trigger. All right, well, I'm going to cast that down since it's not legendary. I am going to Blossom Defense. No! Unfortunately, I wanted to really Blossom Defense this, so it survives when you attack, but... All right, well, I'm at 14. Yep. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to trade away this Jade Light Ranger, unfortunately. Yeah, because you can't block here, right? Yeah. yeah so I go to can't. four from that trigger. And so that uh, forces you to block two. This will block here, and then this can just block here. Here, I guess. Okay. Uh, and bring me to one. And bring you to one. Your turn. And now I have to kill you. You have to kill me. <laughs> I want to see it. Oh, one of these could just kill me. Um, no, that's that's only nine, and you can't tap those for green. So this one is only plus four. Um, kind of got. I actually got punished for paying a life to gain an energy. Otherwise, I might be able to actually just stabilize from here. If I hadn't done that. But I think I'm just dead. Because this doesn't get me anything but more lands, and I drew another land. You look pretty dead. Yeah, this is only... Well, yeah, because I'm at one. Yeah, pay, Paying the life for this one on the, the turn before. This gets plus two, plus two. Plus three, plus three, attack you for eight. I'll take eight. You get a six. I'm at six. My turn? Yep. And you're at one? Yep. You're at one? Yep. Cast down. <laughs> okay. Attack. Trigger. Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here for sideboarding. I am making uh, a lot of changes on my side, although some of them are mostly cosmetic. Essentially what I'm doing is bringing out some of my creatures that are, while big and good in combat, are liabilities against Brad's removal spells. Uh, especially cast down, which is just very efficient at dealing with something very large. Uh, I'm bringing out a card that is meant for me to be getting more aggressive when I want to be a little bit more defensive and uh, just trump up Brad's creatures. And the cards I'm bringing in are cards that are still big but are more effective, uh, at least more reliable in combat against what Brad is presenting, still allow me to turn the corner, and then a little bit of interaction here. So hopefully I can uh, not fall as far behind as I did in game one. That's interesting, because I'm boarding out a lot of my aggressive elements, thinking that I'm the defender, and... Your entire deck is aggressive elements. You can't take them all out, Brad. Well, I can't take them all out, but I'm trying. I, <laughs> I, I, this card might end up being worth the matchup, but if I'm... I have to pick on which actual spells. Um, I can see not having these on the play and having some of these um, on the play. And we'll see if I lose this game if we go back to sideboard, but I will be changing sideboarding if we do. Sure. Because there's no way that this could be correct. Okay, we're here for game number, what is this, two? Yeah, and yeah. I'm on the play, and even though my mana base is awkward, I have this on turn one, so I probably can't lose. I think I know what it is. <laughs> Good 19. Wow, okay, if that was a forest, I don't think I'd make, oh, I don't even know if I want to make this play. Because, like, this is a better use of it, but whatever. Yeah, of course you have the push. I don't know if that's a good use of it, though. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I was just going to go with this. Uh, but now, if I can use my mana more effectively... I still just want to do this to get a 
non-painful green mana. Go to 18. <laughs> Go. This is ridiculous. All right, I'm going to get an energy your turn. <laughs> Take two more. I'm going to get two energy. Oh, <laughs> uh, shucks. That's a good magic card. You can go. You don't want to attack? I don't want to trade. Oh, sure. Actually, I guess I do want to trade. Because you have two energy. Yeah, I'm at eight. Yeah. I just like immediately thought I didn't want to trade with this, but I have more creatures. All right, I'll go to two energy. You I'm go at to 16. 16. So we have m multiple different lines we can take. We can like go down this path, this path. Or this path, but I think this is the best. So I'm going to divest you. Oh, you have a defense. That's that's actually interesting. Defense L. Yeah, that is not a card I wanted to reveal to Brad right now. Green. Belt. I wanted to get that to life. <laughs> and Oasis. Well, I. I think I'm going to take the green belt and leave you with just an elf. Yeah, that makes sense. Green belt's also really good in this hand, just giving me more fuel for Harvester. Yeah. I guess we can just play this and just cast this next turn, and that's not that bad. All right. You go to three, energy, your turn. Uh... Oh my god, I did it. <laughs> no! Well, actually, I don't mind you drawing lands now. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, crew the Harvester and Mush. Yeah, I'm at 13. I'll gain three. I'm at 19. All right, and I'm going to go to 12. Uh, 19 to 13, yep, you can go. Here. 12, draw an extra card. Attack up to three energy. I got a 15. And the expensive way. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Uh, well, that's frustrating, but now I can just sort of, I'm, gonna, I'm a pretty healthy life total. Brad is going to get some extra cards here. Um, but I can turtle up for now. Uh, and that means I can still attack for two. I'm fine with this trade. Ten. Get you to ten. Uh, and I will pay one and play a Brontodon. Ooh. I'm at 14. Yeah. Pass. All right, I'll go to... Nine. Yeah, nine. Draw. Draw again. Well, then, we are not... We're not looking too hot here. You have so many more cards, though. What do you got up there? Not. Four lands? No. I have spells. I have to figure out how I'm supposed to use them, though. That so is the what, difficult part of magic. What happens if we attack with both of these? We go up to three energy. Does he crew and try to block? But then these? All right, let's try something. I can give you another game after all, right? <laughs> It's not a big deal. All right. <coughs> Attack. So playing the scrounger here is uh, telling. It makes me think Brad has the two mana sack a creature, something that's minus five, minus five. What? No, I'm just playing proper magic. I'm F6. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if he has that plus fatal push, then the first one uh, turns on revolt for the push. So he has two removal spells to aim at the Harvester. Uh, so what you can do to get around all of it is just main phase ca <laughs> cast Blossoming Defense on this before we blockers. Like, get ahead of the... <laughs> get ahead of it all. <laughs> um, so if I... You have three cards in hand? 
yeah. if I accrue and you and we end up just trading, I pay a life to cast this, um, and go to thirteen, take four, go to nine. This is then gone. Like, what am I doing at that point? Like, I can untap and like use Oasis on this and attack. And does that even force a? You're at nine. Uh, that that's an exact lethal attack, actually. Uh, but I would go to eight to do so. You would have to block something. You probably block the Brontodon and go to three. And then your attack puts me to one. Oh, this will be gone. Mm. Oh, yeah, that would be gone. So your attack would actually put me to four. Um, Are we talking next turn? E yes. Or in two turns? Well, I'm talking about your following turn. Oh, yeah, then I can bring this back. Uh, yeah. yeah, but not not so it can no. attack, because you'd be tapped out. So yep. if I go for this and we end up trading off, because you know I have this blossoming defense, I take one to cast the defense, I go to 13, this dies, so then I can't block these, I go to 9. Yeah. I untap, worst case scenario, I use Hashib Oasis on the Atlanta War Elves and Mush. Forcing me to block. Force you, you probably block the Brontodon, because yeah. in two turns it's worth more, more value than the Elves. You take 6, that'll bring you to 3. Um, and this will be, So these will both be gone, I'll be at uh, 8. Because I'll have to take one to use the Oasis, and you'll be at three, and I'll have these two. And then uh, you'll untap. You'll probably not want, maybe not want to go to two. Um, probably will, actually, because this is a one-one. This were two power normally, I think you wouldn't want to go to two. So, you, know, you probably still draw cards, because in worst case, these can trade. Uh, so you probably draw a card, be up to three cards in hand, go to two, and then I think I'm in an awkward spot from there. Because yeah, I you just worst case it. scenario, you just get to like block off of siphoners and start getting the scrounger back, and the scrounger really takes over the game from there. Granted, I can draw like a lot of good things, um, but is that then the question becomes like that's not great, but the question then becomes, is that better than just taking it? I guess I could like try to go to blocks and trade at a land or else for a brought it on, land or else for a golden sleeve or for a siphon. Yeah, yeah. Double block these two, but I don't think that ends up being very good. Yeah, I think this is just the better line to just force everything to trade and hope to draw something. Vicious offering, that's the card. Yep. All right, you're at so I'm at nine, 13 down to nine. Yep, nine all. And I have energy in your turn. I guess I can stop the scrounger from doing anything because it's scavenger grounds if I want to. I don't have a creature right now. I mean, I will, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of awkward. Because it makes me want to not attack with this. Um, Boneficker's got an eyelash on mine. So, if that's the case... I'm getting bored over here, Ross. Oh, it's just a land. Yeah, it's just a forest. But it, this, if I don't attack Lenor Elves now, I can do both things. I can Oasis and Scavenger Grounds. And I would like that. Um, I, I don't know what else you're doing. I would like Oasis this. Well, forcing the trade here or ta you taking more damage is actually kind of nice. Um, because leaving the Bronto on around is just, better, just yeah. a better thing. Um so this would, if you wanted to trade the Bronto on, you would take five and still and go to four. So it saves you one life, but it takes away the Scrounger. I think that's mm -hmm. better. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna hash up Oasis, this Branch Walker, yeah. and attack. I think I just block here, just because next turn if you pump and I have to block, like I can still trade off one of these. Yeah. And that nothing can trade with with both the Oasis. I can't get good trades with them. So yeah, I'm just gonna block okay. there and go to four. Go to four, and then I'm and then gonna, gonna sack an. I definitely want to sack an Oasis here because I can sack the grounds to an Oasis later. This yeah. just gives me more options. All right, well, let's go to three. Yep. Draw a card. Draw an extra card. hoo -wee. Okay, I like land. It's a good start. All right. I go to five. Yep, your turn. Just removal spells. I'm at three, right? You're, yes, you're three. Okay. Well... That didn't go so well. Um. Hmm. So now, is there?
there any point in me trying to Oasis main phase? Well, you can't do it at instant speed. Uh, yeah, or just save it. Yeah. And save mana. I'm at, you have me at five. Um. I'm, I'm thinking, what happens if you have one removal spell? I go to one. Uh. If you use your yeah, oasis. which is relevant, and then I'm and I'm left with a branch walker. Uh, then you untap and like have to leave back a blocker, but I don't. What, what do I have to get through that blocker? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I. No, I do have that. I do. Have, okay, I have that. I have those. Okay. Yep. Let's uh, oasis the land of elves and okay. mush. All right, well, I guess I'm dead. Set on casting both of my removal spells. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to two. Okay. Draw two. Ooh. Uh, is there any haste that Mono Green can play? I guess we get another game of magic if there is. Go, go to one. Well, the only way I had now is if you paid a life there, because I have Walking Ballista in my deck. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And okay. I just draw lands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we are for match one of the week. How are you feeling, Ross? Um, I feel fine. I don't think that matchup is very good for the mono green side. Um, even though I am a, like, a little bit bigger, the mono green aggro deck just isn't very good at blocking. Well, yeah, it, the, the days of like Strangrove Geist and, and uh, Dungrove, Dungrove yeah, Elder and yeah. things like that are gone. And uh, I mean... This this is this is a good point where I've been preaching it for the last six months. Ever since they took Rogue Refiner away, I've been, just been saying that green is no longer a good color. And maybe we've like had it be for the last four years or whatever. But there's there's nothing good in green. Like there's <laughs> there's not like when people like are arguing with me, they were like, Nah, bruh. Like, Merfolk Branchwalker is a playable magic card. And I'm thinking back to the times where we had, like, like all of the cards. Tracker, Perfect, Corsair, 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 Tracker, yeah. Um, Sylvan Advocate. Even what's the Duskwatch Recruiter was arguably, like, played in, like, Coco decks. And Coco and, 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 and like, Sylvan Advocate, you know? Like, all of these awesome cards, uh, even Creature Lands that were really good in these decks. Like, th there's no contest. Like, sure, the card might be castable. But it it's not on the level of the other things. Like you're playing that card, I'm playing Scrappy Scrounger. Yep. Like I, I think the big uh, asymmetry here was that you just had good removal and I didn't. So well, I'm pretty yeah. sure this deck just needs four Walking Blisses in it, as most lists actually have. But I caught them to add more Sweet Dominary cards. Oh, you don't have Walking Blisses. I have two in the board. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so I think Walking Bullets is really important for that reason, especially, obviously, it's going to be really important in these matchups. Real quick um, quiz. Yeah. For the life of, of magic, it's one of those stupid hypothetical questions. By the end of Walking Ballista's career, will it just not even be a close discussion that it was better in standard than Hangerback Walker was during its standard time? Um, I mean, Hangerback Walker was only like, really awesome for a couple months, right? That During that Hangerback Abzan... Well, and like Era. white tokens and oh yeah, and well that was also another like three month span. Yeah, so it was only two like pretty brief seasons where Hangerback Walker was really good. And, and part of the reason that it was so time. good is because of Dramokus Command. Yeah, I where agree with that. I think Ballista has generally been a better card. Yeah, I think Hangerback Walker had more favorable circumstances. Uh, although Ballista also just went into snake decks for a while that were really good. Another hypothetical: you got a Ravager on five, a Walking Ballista on one, and a Hangerback Walker on one, and they're at eight. But you have to sacrifice your Ravager. Where do they go? Well, I would first sack the hanger back and then the token and put it on seven and then put them on the Blista and kill them. Vomit. This is why I hate Ross. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow with some no ban list modern. Uh, so stay tuned. I've got, I'm not going to lie, uh, I'm, I I brought some, some decks for science this week. Like, real exploratory like definitely could have holes, not really trying to like cover my bases, trying to play it safe. Like, I don't even know if my brawl deck functions. <laughs> Honestly, like like can win a game of magic. Like it's for science. I'm very curious. So uh but anyway, this is gonna be a fun week on the versus series. I've got some fun brews. And just so you know, uh to keep looking out for it, tomorrow we're gonna be playing No Bandless Modern. 
Wednesday, a little bit of brawl. Thursday, some popper action. And then we're going to conclude with another match of uh, Dominary Base Standard. So, yeah, I'm excited. So am I. All Even right. though I'm down, I feel good. I think that matchup wasn't great for me. I think my matchup's going to be better later in the week. I, I'm undefeated in brawl so far. I Oh, and I do not think my deck can function. Yeah. Like My No Manless Modern deck is not playing it safe. It's just gen generally good. I'm... Or mine is, is an safe. experiment. Okay. Pure My, experiment. I always crush you at Popper. That's not fair. We're split 1-1. One, one. You just crush my spirits in Popper. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's good. That, that counts. <laughs> that counts yeah. for me. But not when you're trying to get on the scoreboard. Is this why you do there, so medium at tournaments that you always two, justify? Two like scoreboards, I Brad. won the tournament. Ross, no. you win 10-5. Nope, I won the tournament. <laughs> On the Versus series, there are two scoreboards, Brad. There's one that's the nominal scoreboard, and the other that's the moral scoreboard. And that, that one really does count, but only on the Versus series. And only when it's the two of us. I hate my life. See you tomorrow.